Hi, welcome to our talk on how to take charge of your sensitive data. My name is Scott Ellis, and I'm a product manager on Google Cloud's data security and privacy team. Now, data powers your business, and data is one of your greatest assets, but it can also be one of your biggest risks. And today, we're going to talk about how you can take charge of your data, and we're going to cover topics like how you can discover and classify your sensitive data. You know, we feel that understanding your sensitive data is the first step in protecting it. And once you have that kind of visibility, we're gonna talk about how you can manage your data risk using things like security policy, confidential processing, and data obfuscation. And ultimately we wanna be able to do this at scale so that you can focus on your business and again, really focus on the outcomes. Now to do this, automation is key. And it, again, if you want to know your data and if you want to understand your sensitive data so that you can better protect it, on-demand scans and manual review can help. However, the challenge is that your data is growing as your business is growing. And that means your data footprint is growing and it's more challenging to manage it. And so you really need a way to automatically discover and classify your data. And today we're going to talk about how you can get automatic discovery, automatic inspection, automatic classification, and automatic data profiling, and really automatic DLP. And this is now available for BigQuery, and it's powered by our cloud DLP platform. And that what that means is that you can get an understanding of your data risk across your entire BigQuery footprint. And that means you can understand where you have maybe low risk data, which could mean that there's no evidence of sensitive data or that it's got extra protections in place or where you have moderate or high risk. This could be where you have evidence of sensitive data like PII or evidence of unstructured data or free text that might be inside of your, your, your tables or where you have highly sensitive data, something like PII, like credit card numbers or financial data. And what automatic DLP will do is generate rich insights for each table and column across your org. And that's really important because you want to get that visibility across all of your tables, all of your columns, so you can really understand your data risk. Now, here's an example of a column profile for a table where we're seeing different types of metrics that indicate the type of risk, the type of sensitivity, and it includes our DL the DLP's predicted info type. And this gives an indication in this table that we see evidence of a credit card number, an email address, and a couple columns that have evidence of a person name. This kind of data type can really help you understand your data or take the next step to protecting it. Now, this automatic visibility with DLP really means that you get continuous monitoring. That means that tables are picked up automatically. So as you're creating new projects, new data sets, and new tables in BigQuery, automatic DLP will pick them up automatically and profile them for you. And it's designed as a fully managed service to have low overhead. What that means is that there's no jobs to manage or orchestrate, and you can enable this directly in the Cloud Console. It's also been built with data residency in mind. And again, as you're turning this on across your entire org, you may have data in different regions, different geographic regions. And DLP will inspect that data in the geographic region that you have set uh, for your BigQuery tables. It will also generate the profiles and store them in that same geographic region. And that way you can ensure that your data stays where you want it, even when it's being inspected and profiled by, by DLP. And lastly, this is Google driven. And what that means is that we figure out how to inspect and profile your data so you can focus again on the outcomes. Great, now let's see this in action. And now let's see a demo of this automatic DLP. And for this, let's meet Angie. Angie is a data compliance officer for a large online retailer that serves customers across the globe. Angie oversees how data is collected, shared, and used across all departments. Angie's company is growing and their data is growing with them. They've chosen to use BigQuery as their data warehouse to power most of their analytics and business needs. And usage of BigQuery is spread across several departments and project teams. 
And again, these teams are creating new projects, new data sets, new tables constantly as part of their business. And Angie wants to know, how can I gain visibility into the sensitive data across my org? And for this, we're going to use our automatic DLP. What this means is you can now enable Cloud DLP across your org and your entire BigQuery footprint. So what that means is that you can turn DLP on across your organization, as we're seeing here, across specific organization folders. You know, Maybe these represent departments uh, or different parts of your organization or individual projects. Now, BigQuery data lives inside tables and data sets that reside inside these projects. So depending on where you turn this on, you'll get coverage across all that data. When this is enabled, Cloud DLP will automatically pick up new data, pick up existing data, profile it, and give you those insights into your, into your sensitive data. Now, enabling this is easy and can be done completely in the Cloud Console UI. For this, you would, at the org level, Angie would navigate to security and then data loss prevention, and then click on the scan org uh, link here. Now let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'm gonna switch over here to my test project. We're gonna click on scan organization. Now we can configure this in one click and take care of everything for you. But let's go ahead and walk through the custom configuration just so you can see the options that you have. The first option you have here is to choose whether you wanna scan your entire organization or if you wanna browse and select individual folders to scan. For now, we'll just scan our entire organization. Now this service is built with Cloud Data Loss Prevention or Cloud DLP, so you can use your existing inspection templates um, or you can create a new one, but this is powered by the same uh, info type detectors that we have for Cloud DLP, so you can select from our built-in detectors or define custom ones of your own. Additionally, you can select this third option, which will run a set of our most popular kind of default uh, uh, detectors um, and just simply select that option. And next, you can see um, the permissions needed to run this scan. Now, we're very transparent about the permissions that are needed here. We can also create those for you, or you can set those permissions individually. Again, just depending on what is best for your organization. And next, let's talk a little bit about data residency. So data residency is crucial to your data. And we've built this uh, you know, Cloud DLP from the ground up to support data residency. And that holds true for this automatic uh, solution for BigQuery. What that means is that when you have data in a certain geographic region, you know, configured in BigQuery to be in a certain ge geographic region, DLP will scan data in that same region. So the process of scanning your data happens in the same geographic region. Additionally, the profile output will be stored in the same geographic region as your BigQuery data. And again, this allows you to maintain that data residency. Additionally, we give you the control to, to, to decide where to store the actual configuration data, which is what uh, we're configuring here. Again, we wanna make sure you have good insight and control of your data to know where and how it's being processed. Now, if I click Create here, this is going to enable uh, this new service for my entire organization, uh, which is great. Um, however, I've already done that, so I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel. And let's take a look at what the results look like. Now, in this particular organization, I only have these six uh, projects here. Uh, and each of these projects has BigQuery data, uh, data sets and tables inside them. Now, here at the Project View, I'm just getting a high-level view of the tables and kind of a summary of the risk and sensitivity in them. Let's go ahead and click on one of these projects. And now what I'm seeing is every data set and table that is in that project and the associate metrics at the table level, including things like our data risk assessments, whether this data is public, what kind of encryption it has, row count. And I can also click on one of these tables to go even further. I'm gonna click on this table. And this will take me into the column level profile. Here we see detailed metrics for every column in that table, including DLP's predicted info type, which again is if we can figure out that this column looks like a particular data type, we actually label that column here with that type. So here we're seeing a column with credit card numbers, email addresses, 
and person name. We, it looks like we have a first name and a last name, as well as metrics around that uh, for data risk sensitivity and some additional metrics around whether or not this column looks like it has free text or it's you know kind of unstructured, maybe a comment field, as well as uniqueness and null percent estimates. Now, these are important because imagine this column of credit card numbers. We also see that there is a uniqueness score of one, and, a, and that's a high uniqueness score, which indicates that this column likely contains unique credit card numbers in every row. Um, which would be different than a low uniqueness score where maybe that same value is repeated over and over multiple times. We also see that with an estimated null percent of zero, that means that this column looks like it's pretty well populated and there's not a lot of null or sparsely populated data in these columns. But again, this is the kind of rich insights that you get with the column level profile, as well as the table and project level profiles. And all of this again will be continuously running and generating as new tables are created across your org. Great, let's go back to Angie. Now Angie needed an automated solution. And Angie chose to use Cloud DLP's new service to automatically discover, inspect, and profile their BigQuery tables for sensitive data like PII. And this automatic DLP service will pick up new projects, data sets, and tables automatically. And the outcome is that Angie's team now has clear visibility into their sensitive data and can make more informed decisions about how it's protected, used, processed, and shared. And that concludes our demo of the new automatic DLP for BigQuery. Great, and we've now just shown you how you can get org-wide visibility with the new automatic DLP. And again, this can give you clear visibility into your sensitive data so that you can make more informed decisions. And that's now available for BigQuery. Now that you have that clear visibility into your data, let's figure out some ways to manage your data risk and reduce your data risk. So first, how can I enable more fine-grained access control and protection? So now that you know where your sensitive data is, maybe you wanna go in and, and uh, employ column level access policy. And using BigQuery policy tags, you can enable column level access enforcement, which can help you strike a balance between access and security. So an example policy is shown here, and these policies have a taxonomy or a hierarchy to them. What that means is that we can put an element like credit card number underneath or inside of a higher level policy like financial. And that allows you to grant access and manage your policy at that higher level while enabling you to tag the data at the lower level at credit card number. Let's see this in action. So. Here's an example here where we're seeing a table where we have tagged four of the columns in here with a tag for person name, email address, and credit card number. And we have turned on enforcement of, of a policy using BigQuery policy tags so that users can only access those sensitive elements if they have the right permission. And what that means is if I have access to this table, but I don't have access to those particular columns, I'll still be able to query the table, and in this case, maybe run an analysis on the payment type and the transaction amount, but I won't be able to access those sensitive uh, elements like the PII here that we see, unless I have that additional access control. And again, that's a way you can find that balance between access and security, and overall reduce and manage some of your data risk. Another technique is to go in and use obfuscation or masking. And this is something that you can do with Cloud DLP. And it's a technique we call de-identification. Now de-identification includes a set of transforms like redaction, masking, tokenization, format preserving encryption, date shifting, bucketing, and more. And these transformations are designed to actually manipulate and transform your data in order to reduce the risk. So for example, in this before and after animation that we're seeing, we're seeing these techniques applied to a table. In this case, a table that has four columns. And we're applying transformations across the entire column in these first three columns. Again, in this, our goal here is to reduce the risk of the data. So we are manipulating and transforming the sensitive information and replacing it with something that is obfuscated. Now in that fourth column, we're combining the power of DLP's inspection capability with the masking 
so that we can actually go into these unstructured comment fields, find the sensitive element, and only mask that sensitive element. And this is something that you can do because we've combined that inspection capability with the data masking capability all in one platform. Otherwise, you'd have to potentially redact the entire comment field columns, but instead you can actually go in and redact only the sensitive information in line. Now, another question is, how can I improve protection and process my data in a confidential manner? Again, now that you have visibility into where your sensitive data exists, you can use confidential processing to process that more securely. An example of that would be confidential data props, which offers encryption in use, which can easily add security protections to your most sensitive data workloads. Here's an example where we are turning on confidential compute with a simple command line flag as we create and launch our data proc pipeline. Now, confidential data proc is now in GA. Now, data proc is a fully managed and highly scalable service for running things like Apache Spark, Flink, and Presto. And confidential data proc adds that data encryption in use, again, to protect your most sensitive data. And it does this by using confidential VMs to provide that inline memory encryption. And this is powered by AMD's secure encrypted virtualization processors. And this brings us to the end of our talk on how to take charge of your sensitive data. And we'll leave you with a few key takeaways and action items. First, automatic DLP is now available for BigQuery and can give you insight into your entire BigQuery footprint across your org. You can get started in the Cloud Console by navigating to security and then data loss prevention. Or you can read our documentation at cloud.google.com slash DLP. You can also check out obfuscation and masking, or, or what we call de-identification, also at cloud.google.com slash DLP. And you can read more about confidential processing, which is available with VMs, GKE, and now in GA for data proc at cloud.google.com slash confidential hyphen computing. Thank you again for joining us today, and we're happy to be part of your journey as you take care of your sensitive data. Thank you.